Yeah, I can feel her. Once they start flexing like that, see how she's moving? Oh, there she goes. All right, buddy. Thanks, man. Perfect. Thanks for your help. Excellent. It's time now for The Angler's View, brought to you by Pure Energy Rechargeable Batteries. Sean's muskie hit an inline bucktail cast down the side of an isolated hump. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. The rocky hump measured 80 feet long by 30 feet wide. Deep water displaying scattered sparse weeds surrounded the structure. Depths around the hump were 16 to 18 feet. The hump itself tapered up from the lake bottom to depths of 8 to 4 feet below the surface. Sean observed towering milfoil covering the entire structure, which reached the surface on upper portions of the hump. After closer inspection, it became apparent that much of the fauna was dead or dying, a natural process in the fall. However, Sean observed healthier green weeds along the head and outside edge. Schools of small bait fish and fry could be seen holding in this healthier milfoil. Sean knew that where there is bait, there are smaller predators that would make a satisfying meal for a post-winter muskie. The strike zone in this scenario was the healthy band of weed running from the head of the hump to the halfway point down the outside edge. This particular muskie hit a double muskie buck in black with a number five fire tiger blade. The bait was retrieved at various speeds until a fish hit. In this case, it was a slow to moderate retrieval speed that triggered interest. This particular bay hosted three humps with similar characteristics. Sean cast his bait at various angles parallel and horizontal to the structure on each of the humps, using his trawling motor to maneuver the boat into the most advantageous casting positions. Other productive lures on this trip were manta gliding jerk baits. Try slowing down your retrieve in the fall. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website.